family and uh, had, uh, had a, a special place uh, in this world that uh, God used him uh, to make an impact on a lot of you folks who are here. And what we're going to do this afternoon is I'm going to share a few words with you. Um, and then uh, Shane's sister is going to share some things. Also, his boss, Ron, is, is here today. And then we're going to give anybody that would like an opportunity uh, to share a story or a few words about their relationship with Shane and Walker. Do that. We'll do that in just a, a little while here, so you might be thinking about that. But I want to start by opening up with a word here, so let's go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, because it's at times like these that uh, we don't know where else to turn. We thank you, Father, for uh, the sacrifice that he made that can give us that hope and that confidence that we have that this is not the end of things for us. That those who believe and have trusted in you have uh, an eternal life uh, in heaven. And Father, we look forward to where we can be there, but uh, until then, we are, we are here until you call. We have to let go of shame, and uh, that's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for Cassandra, and for his parents, for his sister, for um, all of his family and all of his friends that uh, loved him so dearly. So we are here today to ask for your blessing and for your comfort. And as the Bible says, a peace that goes beyond anything we can understand and figure out when it comes to your Holy Spirit through your word. So we ask for that proper provision in a special way for this wife and son and family. Lord, we thank you that um, there is a time coming when there will be no more tears, no more pain. Know that she is experiencing that right now. So we ask a blessing upon this time as we remember Shane and what he meant to us and what he meant to the person in this world. We pray all this and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to uh, read a passage of scripture from the Gospel of Matthew. Um, it's Matthew chapter 24, and it's about the return of Christ. But I think it has application for us this afternoon. And it goes like this. No one knows about the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered into the ark. And then they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. And that's how it will be with the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, will be taken, the other left, two women will be grinding, and mill will be taken in the other left. And verse 42 of Matthew 24 says, Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. I read that scripture because I want us to focus in on that little phrase, keep watch. Because today and what has happened over the last month, really serves to illustrate that we don't know what tomorrow holds. There's none of us that know what's going to happen tomorrow. And it's only those who have a, a rich and deep faith in Jesus Christ can have any kind of confidence in the future. Shane was only 30 years old. By our standard, that's too young. And as we remember Shane, the old phrase, keep watch, and that, and that just that scholarship so much for me reminds us to live life to the fullest, to live it for our families, to live it for today, and most importantly, to live it for the Lord. Cassandra and Shane were married for eight years. Shane was just the right balance and being one of those really, really smart guys. 
go to the one guy too. I don't know if this individual is here, but I did hear about a co-worker that got his poker chips that he kept on his desk glued together um, by Shane and uh, when he wasn't watching. And he was a determined man and wanting to work in sports after graduating Texas A&M. Applied to just about every sports team, I guess there, there is, and uh, finally ended a job with the Boston Celtics and uh, doing all kind of analysis and so forth. This is what, what intrigued me, it's Cassandra about your story that uh, I've heard thus far is such a deep commitment to family. She, you didn't want to stay back there, that you, you felt like at Colorado Springs was more family oriented for the sake of family, a dream job that many people would you know, give a lot for you guys decided to, to move out here. Been able to secure another great job where she's been working at for uh, Eurotech. It's been a good time. But well, on June 23rd, life changed forever. Cassandra and Shane discovered that he had a fast moving cancer and then just last week. Shane Douglas. But from what I hear, Shane faced uh, this news with a great deal of courage, strength, and a bit of humor and even excitement as well. I don't know where all of you folks are in your faith. Let me tell you, the only way that a 30-year-old man can face that inevitable of death with excitement is a trust in Jesus Christ. It's a faith in Him knowing what He has in store for us. I want to tell you, that's, that's what's called keeping watch. It's living life to the fullest, living it for your family, sacrificing for other people and for your Living with no regrets. Shane was a believer in Jesus. And that, my friends, is the only way to live life without regrets. My encouragement to Cassandra, to Andy, to Jack. Parents, Jim, Michelle, everybody, that more better. Is to live life by keeping watch. Shane and me, uh, his 
family. His little boy and his wife just be filled with uh, his spirit, his zest, and his love for life, and, uh, for what you have uh, gifted us with. And may you give them an incredible amount of strength and courage to face the day. Pray this in Jesus. As I mentioned, uh, we're going to have Mandy share a few thoughts.
I have to assume that this room is full of recipients of that generosity in some way or another. He wasn't touchy feely about anything, but he would bend over backwards for you if he had the opportunity. My bike MS accounts over the years have been full of donations he sent after selling more Celtics tickets than I can count and running March Madness brackets and all the proceeds going to the MS Society on behalf of me and my home. One time when I tweeted a picture of a KitchenAid mixer I was cutting in a store, it showed up on my doorstep two days later with a loving unsigned note that said, Cram a cram hole. <laughs> I knew immediately it was from Shane. What probably isn't so surprising to anybody in this room is how smart he always was. It had a lot to do with how hard he worked. When we were kids, he sought out a part-time job that combined his love of technology with his love of sports and was hired by a Chicago company called Stats Incorporated to keep live stats for various sports games using the program he wrote specifically for that pur purpose. He was 12 years old at the time. From there, I watched as he worked with his high school and college sports teams, introducing them to technology they hadn't even considered yet and improving the way they did everything. After he graduated, he was hired at the Boston Celtics, initially for a simple IT role, but he convinced them to also let him analyze stats, write complicated programs, and run all of their technology. He left six years later, and I'm guessing that anybody who worked with him would say he left the Celtics a better place than he found it. Most people were surprised to hear he was leaving his dream job, but Shane had more important things to do. Cassandra was pregnant with Beth, and he felt it was essential that he work a schedule that would not take precious time away from his relationship with his wife and kid. I think he got that from her dad. Shane wrote on Devin's blog after his move, I, couldn't, I actually couldn't be more excited about it, including my four years in college. I've had a solid 10 years of being selfish, spending money on me and not worrying much about anyone else. Myself and I had a good run. I'm happy I get to have a little person who depends on me now. On Monday, I started my new job in Colorado Springs. I left my house at 8.18 a.m. I walked into the door to my office at 8.29 a.m. I didn't spend those 11 minutes feeling sorry for myself about not getting to do the things that were fun for me that day. I spent them thinking about how awesome it would be to have an extra two hours every single day that I can spend with my family. So maybe I gave up the dream job to move to Colorado. That's fine with me. Colorado in itself is great, but it gives me the best opportunity to make what's fun for me and what's fun for my family align themselves. That's what makes moving to Colorado the good thing for us right now. Well, that is season's key passes to man. Shane loved his kid. Man, did he love his kid. It almost surprised me how good he was with Devin immediately because he really wasn't big on babies or kids, but he really did adore Devin. I rarely saw him not on the floor with the kid or throwing him in the air, blowing in his face to make him laugh or making crazy noises at him. He was so excited to watch him grow and learn, and every milestone for Devin was a milestone for Shane. Classic. 
makes me happy every time I see it. These are the good things about marriage, but they don't tell you ahead of time. I would have loved to have worked with you both feel the same under the stain for idiot strangers into the vows. And as I found out this morning, after almost two years of being married, I don't even have to see her face anymore to know it's coming. I just have to hear an idiot. Of course, she's also incredibly kind and capable. And I have no doubt that she'll raise this kid beautifully. She was good for Shane, she's good for Deb, and she's good for me. She's one of the many, many ways the Lord gave, and I thank God for her every day. I know Shane did too. In fact, even one day we were walking through Target shopping for essentials for their new house. What kind of laundry detergent do you use, I asked. No idea, Shane replied, because Andrew does laundry. What kind of dishwasher detergent? No idea, because Andrew does dishes. We went through a list of cleaning products and household items, and each time he had no idea. Finally, I said, so she just does everything for you? He looked back at me and exclaimed, yes, don't you think I know how lucky I am? <laughs> he didn't want to leave them alone, but at the same time, he was looking forward to what was coming next. From the moment he was diagnosed a month ago, he didn't seem worried or scared a moment about death. His matter-of-fact, straightforward way, Shane was sure about his faith. He knew that the next step would include looking in the face of God, in a place we can only imagine. He knew he wouldn't be the only one to keep he knew he wouldn't be waiting for us, and he knew that there were better things in the store for him. So we're taking comfort in that today, and every day and every minute, and sometimes every suffocating second. My buddy is gone from this earth. But I will play and feast and joke with him again. I'm sure of it, and I look forward to it every day of my life. And that's the best thing that the Lord gave. Ooh. far too early and you to keep me When I interviewed Shane, uh, he was working with the Boston Celtics, and I had to do an interview over the phone, um, and it was one of the easiest interviews that I had to do. Um, I immediately liked Shane. Um, we spent a lot of the interview simply talking about our shared love for sports, and the minute I walked out of the uh, or the minute I ended that interview, I walked into Paul, I thought I'd been in his office, and I said, Paul, I
While he was incredibly talented and gifted, there were times that he questioned that, um, that talent and wondered whether or not he could do some of the things that we assigned him. I remember we assigned him a, a task working on security um, for our application. And there were days I'd walk up to him and I'd say, how's it going, Shane? And he said, I'm good. I can't do this, this is too hard. And then I'd go back the next day Shane was with us in Brazil. Um, certainly he missed San Diego and was anxious to get home. Um, but the day he got sick, uh, or I guess it wasn't the day he got sick, but the day he found out he got sick, and uh, he called me and told me what the diagnosis was and asked if he could go home. I told him, absolutely, we'll get you on the first day, we'll get you on, get you home. Um, but I couldn't believe what he said after that. He apologized. Hardworking, he was dedicated, but most of all, he was fun. And I think that Shane would like it. He shared some of the funny stories we had. Um, I'm sure there are many more. If you want some funny stories about Shane over the course of his life and what we got to know in two years, um, I want to share a few of, of the funny stories that we had. <coughs> he was always laughing and joking in the office. There's one day I went over to talk to Shane about something. Talked a while ago about how Shane loved to go out for lunch. And, uh, one of the places that he found that we uh, uh, that he really really loved was Monica's Tigers. Um, I lived in Tigers for about 15, 15 years ago, and uh, I've driven by Monica's Tigers countless times. Of times. Never once in my life thinking I should go in there. Uh, but it, it quickly became one of his favorite places to go on. A lot of people in our office and stay places to go. Um, and in Monica. Joked about it afterwards. He said, Man, I hope nobody's looking at my suit. 
surgeries here. They're going to see Mexican donkey car. And go, what the heck is this guy going to do? <laughs> One day when we were in Brazil, some of our co-workers um, who have been doing it for the has kind of around the world who have been working on uh, local topics. So there's several co-workers who have colleagues that want to send some messages that I'd like to move through. <coughs> Dick Wiles is the CEO of Eurotech. Uh, he's over in Europe right now. He says, it's difficult to express one's feelings when someone's so young has this over the time. The only thing is to remember Shane well, and 
I only met him for a short time in Rio. He was part of the IT Solution family, and his passing away makes me and my whole family very sad. My whole team very sad. On behalf of the DeepIT team, I send our condolences to you and your team in Colorado and the other places around the world. I don't know Shane's family, and I can only guess what the loss of a father, husband, or son in such a short time means. It is unfair, the loss, and the fair of his death. Please pass, pass our condolences on to Shane's family. Jason Anderson, one of Shane's colleagues, says, Please send the size to the family what a pleasure it was to work with Shane. What a pleasure it was to work with him just to be around. I'm speaking for many people in many parts of the world who make another time in Los Angeles. Bettina Frazee, who is an um, administrative assistant for us, who knew Shane only via email to never had a chance to meet him, says, This is so sad. Even though I never met him, I feel with Cassandra, the little boy Devin, and his family. It is not fair that he was far too young. For his parents, I guess there's nothing worse than he was a child. In closing, Shane was a father, a son, a son, a husband, and a friend. It's unfair and unbearably sad that he left us far too soon. Robert Frost once said, and in three words, I can sum up everything I've learned about life. It goes on. While it would go on without shame, it would live on in our hearts and in our memory. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Amanda. That's a great place. What we're going to do now before we close is there'll be time for you to share with the family who would be out of the long act of service to the world. If they would like to offer the invitation, if there's somebody that would like to share publicly now a word or two about Shane and your relationship with them, uh, that would be very encouraging to them. And uh, what I think I'd, I'd like to go ahead and do is just, uh, if you wouldn't mind, stand up right where you're at uh, just speak loudly so that everybody can hear you. Um, and uh, we'll just we'll, um, let some, several folks go ahead and share uh, in that way so we have some time to do that. So, is there anybody here that would uh, like to share a word or two? Thank you. 
that the jersey outside that was kind of a geeky joke because it had the number hint on it, variable and integer um, It was just really sad for us, but th th this is, I don't even know what to say. I just, I just want to say, I can't tell you how much all of us have lost in this, and um, really thank you for sharing with us. Thank you very much. Great testimony. Anybody else? I'm sure love to have you. Come on, why don't you come on up here so we can make sure those watching you.
So I had to pull her aside. I'm like, well, this is Cassandra, right? You know, because he seemed to like girls named Cassandra. There was a there was a queen of Cassandra girls. And he goes, not that he ever dated any of them, but he just, you know, those were the people who hung out at the house. Their name was Cassandra. So it was fitting. You know, we didn't, we didn't have to learn a new name. And she said, oh, well, you know, I really like her. Shane does this cool thing with her, and it's so funny. Um, he goes, you know, at night when she's getting ready to go to sleep, she takes her contacts out and he makes her take her glasses off and then he throws stuff at her and she can't catch it. <laughs> well, good, he found somebody to laugh. And um, he would come and visit me on my step. It was a place where we did a great many things and neighbors would come and visit. And one day I was just sitting out there and he came and he sat down and he said, how come you're sitting out here? It's really, really hot, Mrs. Eden Bob. I said, look at my son's window. My son liked to throw fits when he didn't get his way. And he had a will of steel. Robbie's in there screaming. He must have been like four or five. You have to let me out of my room. I have to run away. And he was banging on the window. And Shane goes, wow. <laughs> Why are you out here while he's doing that in there? I said, because I can't kill him <laughs> out here. <laughs> and so when she became a dad, he, uh, he was looking at Honda Pilots, and I own one. So he talked to me about it, and he said, you know, um, you're one of my models for parenting, too, because you had a wonderful child who was very difficult to raise, and you didn't squelch him by yelling at him. <laughs> you didn't see me when I yelled at him, um, but I did do it. And uh, he was just so thrilled to be a dad and, and to be your husband. And I had joy watching the photos on Facebook and seeing you guys fall in love and grow up and have children of your own. And I feel very blessed to have known Shane and um, very grateful that I can be here too. Thanks. Someone else? Hi, my name's uh, Tony Lazaro. I feel a little disjointed because I haven't had a lot of time to think about exactly what I was going to say, but um, I'm the football technology manager for the Denver Broncos, and I met Shane back when, when he was with the Boston Celtics. Um, talked to him over a couple of years there. We just used to talk a lot of sports, talk a lot of technology, um, and just really enjoyed it. spending time with him. You can tell right off the bat he's a super sharp guy. Just, it was nice to have somebody that was in another sports league that I could really talk to about you know, what they were doing. It's a little easier, you know, to talk to other NFL guys. A lot of times they won't share stuff, so uh, he's kind of a great confidant on some of, of that stuff. And when he first told me, he was, you know, thinking of moving to Colorado. Um, you know, he said he just wanted to come out to Colorado. I thought it was going to be a great place to raise a family. He wanted to start a family. You know, one of my immediate things was like, well, we got to get this guy, so. At that time, I went and talked to my GM and you know, said, we got to find a position for this guy. Let's try to work something out. We went back and forth on a couple ideas. You know, he came up with a couple options for me, but none of them were really things that I thought were good enough for Shane. <laughs> so we kind of talked about it. You know, another senior programmer that's working for me now that is kind of near retirement. So we had kind of talked about, well, you know, maybe you know, he's only got another year or two left as he starts near retirement. Maybe we'll look at some other options where we could get him in. Something with you know better money and kind of in. So um, we had looked at something like that, and really that's one of my biggest regrets is professionally. You know, been in the NFL for 16 years, and I think what I regret more than anything is never having the opportunity to get them in there. Um, and you know, I'm very jealous of you guys at Eurotech that you guys got those those couple of years with them, um, and, and you're really kind of. It was still my plan, I, and I was 100% positive in my mind that someday I was going to get the chance to work with him and get him in there. And, you know, you guys were starting to worry a little bit because he'd come back and start talking about how well the job was going and he was enjoying it. And, you know, in my head, I'm just like, no, there goes all my negotiating calories. So it's going right out the window. I was building a new house. And, and really, the, you know, as great as he was at technology, and, you know, I knew he would do a great job, but, you know, that's not the reason I wanted to work with him. That, you know, it really was because I wanted to have him in there and spend every day with him because he was that kind of guy to be around. He was, you know, loved his personality, was loved his sense of humor, and you know, I just loved the man that he was. He was very inspiring. Um, how much he cared about all of you guys. And, um, you know, every conversation we had, we'd be out playing golf or something. And it always circled back around. 
to his family. You know, I got to got to learn about Mandy and, and everything. Everything is well definitely resolved around Cassandra and Devin, and that was evident in, in every conversation that we had. Um, and really, even when I talked about how well I was doing this programming, the first thing he'd always say was, "Well, you know, it's better program is Cassandra." So <laughs> maybe I should be looking to hire you instead. But anyway, I would um, just. I don't know how to tell you guys how sorry I am for your loss. It's definitely way too soon, but uh, for you guys, you raised an, an amazing man. And he's a, he's, a, he's a great guy, and I really miss him.
uh, and then you can just make your way out of there and uh, like I said, visit as long as you'd like to. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again um, for the hope that we have in Christ, and we thank you for the memories that um, we have of Shane, and that uh, those special relationships that were just a few of them acknowledged here. What a great man he was uh, to love his family, uh, first and foremost, to, to, to love his work, and to work hard, uh, to, to demonstrate to those around him uh, what that provides, um, and uh, the faith that he had in him. And we pray that we can all take something from shame and put it into our lives, because uh, that's the real way to remember somebody, uh, to, to put into practice that which he taught us. So I pray again for peace for Cassandra. Uh, I pray that for Devin, for Mandy, Jack, Jim, Michelle, his in-laws, all of his family. And may you just richly bless them with your, with your Holy Spirit and the comfort of your word. In Christ's name. Yeah. 